And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Armorica is a small card game, which is very quick. This is what we would consider in the filler category. Uh, it has different icons on, has to do with getting different people from the Romans and from the Celts on your team. You're basically an administrator trying to get as many points as you possibly can. It has some really nice ideas in the game, and it's not unfun to play, so let's take a look at it. In the course of the game, you have a row of Gauls and you have a row of Romans cards that are placed in front. These cards are stacked in different, uh, le you have letters, you have A, and then B, and C, and D, and then you have one, two, three, fours for the Romans. Each player has one start card, and then everyone takes a turn uh, with the Gauls, everyone takes a turn with the Romans. Here's how the game works. On your turn with the Gaul, you must take a card from the Gaul row and add it to your display in front of you if you can. So, you look here, and this Gaul has two wheat, you have two wheat total in front of you which means you can go over two cards and take one. So let's say I take this person and add them to my row. I now have four wheat. Everyone here moves over. We turn over a new card. And now I can go four into the row next turn. If I don't want, if I don't take a card for some reason or other, then the card would be discarded and the cards still move over. So there's always this constant flow of the cards moving over. The Romans are done the same way, but except with the Romans, you have to look at the bottom of the card. This Roman here, you use wheat, the same way as the Gauls. If I want this Roman down here, for example, I would need to have five wheat in the display in front of me. For other Romans, though, the patricians, you need something different. This guy needs sheep. So to take him, I'm going to need two sheep to get over there. And you'll see that different characters have different icons. For example, this Celt here offers one, or this Gaul here offers one grape. And so once I get that grape, I can take Romans who have grapes. Now the reason that you're doing all this is because you're trying to get as many points as possible. And there's different ways to do so. But one more thing I must notice is that the characters at the bottom have support on them. At the end of each turn, you check. You need one support for every character that you have in front of them. Once you start getting the better cards, you'll notice they have no support. They give you a grain, and at the end of the game, it will be worth some points. But during the course of the game itself, he needs to be fed by somebody else. So you're constantly keeping those things in check. You know, here you have a Gaul who's worth nothing except feeding other people. So there's that. At the end of the game, you get points looking at your display in front of you, and you get them for how many different colors you have in a row. For example, here there are three colors in a row. And three colors gets you six victory points, and then there's one color in a row, and that's only one point. So that's seven victory points total. But if you manage to get all six colors in a row, which I have not yet seen done, then you'll get 21 victory points. And so getting all the different colors in a row matters. There's also some cards which provide coins. They're in the Roman deck, and these coins are worth a victory point at the end. And then, if you have the most of one of the three resources, whether it be olive, sheep, or the grapes, you will also get four victory points. The player with the most victory points is the winner. As I said at the beginning, there's certainly some neat ideas. Using the resources to take cards from all the way down the road, you're constantly basically just drafting cards in front of you, then trying to look at which cards you want. The idea of someone dying if you don't have enough support for them is also good. In fact, sometimes it can be handy because you can kill somebody who's messing up maybe a five or six color streak in front of you, there might be a blue card in the middle, get rid of it. All the Gauls are only three colors, while the Romans are six colors. So obviously, you need to get as many Romans as you can to get that coveted five or six colors in a row. So the whole thing is a lot of fun. Some problems. One is, there are some times where the card you want, I mean, you have that card that you see that's useful for you, and in a multiplayer game, by the time it comes to you, it's gone. Or you, it's just one grape out of reach, and you can't get it, and just your whole plan falls apart. Not a big deal because the game here says 30 minutes, but it's more like 15 to 20 minutes. It's a very quick game. My other caveat is it gets kind of repetitive. Draw, 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 draw. But again, since it's 15 minutes, that's not, that's not a problem. 
If you're looking for a light filler game that has nothing to do with Romans and Gulls, <laughs> just colors and resources supposedly, this is good. I'm not going to keep it mostly because it's just, it doesn't seem to offer anything completely new or different experience from other card games. It's, it's, it's good, but not fantastic, not great, nothing out of the ordinary. I wasn't unhappy with it, and after seeing it, it may be something that you like. It's just, for me, I have enough games that fit the feeling this one gave me. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.